Unfortunately, our ideal gas fantasy world has to come to an end. Did you really believe that gas particles don't take up any volume? Or that they are not attracted to other gases in the container? How foolish. In this lesson, we will learn that real gases deviate from ideal behavior, especially at high pressure or low temperature. Just like the ideal body, ideal gases are a myth. In particular, the idea of ideal gases are founded on two impossibilities, that the particles have no volume and that the particles don't stick to each other. In actuality, real gas particles have volume and real gas particles are attractive. So it's important to ask, when can we trust the ideal gas law? The ideal gas law breaks down at very high pressures because the volume of gas particles starts to become significant. In practice, this occurs at around 10 atmospheres of pressure or greater. The ideal gas law also breaks down at very low temperatures because the gases are moving so slowly that they can stick to each other. In practice, this occurs at around 200 Kelvin or less. If we imagine a real gas being compressed by high pressure, we see that the particles, which used to be spread out, are now much closer to each other. Under such high pressure, the size of the particles becomes significant, and the actual volume of the gas becomes higher than what we would calculate with the ideal gas law. If we continue to imagine a real gas at high pressure, we see that the particles are much closer together. It, as we will learn in chapter 11, substances attract or stick to each other due to something called intermolecular forces. This stickiness means that the gas particles will not collide with the walls of the container with quite as much force as the ideal gas law would predict, leading to a decrease in the expected pressure. Have you ever experienced non-ideal gas behavior? Well, if you've ever used a sample of compressed gas in which the pressure can be as high as 58 atmospheres, you may, you may have noticed that these products get colder during use. That behavior does not make sense for ideal gases not interacting with each other. But if we remember that real gases stick to each other, especially at high pressure, this behavior can be explained by simple thermodynamics. As the gas moves from high pressure to low pressure, we have to break apart attractions between gas particles. And it takes energy to pull those particles apart. Therefore, this is an endothermic process which draws heat from the surroundings. In summary, we cannot trust PV equals NRT at very high pressures and very low temperatures. At high pressure, particle volume increases total volume, and particle attraction decreases total pressure. At low temperature, particles move slower, allowing them more time to stick to each other, decreasing total pressure. Each gas's non-ideal behavior is unique, as shown on this figure. Physical chemists have devised a way to mathematically explain the deviations from ideal behavior for each unique gas. It is called the van der Waals equation of state. The van der Waals equation updates PV equals NRT by describing real gases using two coefficients, A and B, which are different for each gas. Coefficient A quantifies gas particle stickiness. Coefficient B quantifies gas particle volume. You will not need to memorize the van der Waals equation. It's just a fun taste of the wild world of physical chemistry. Time for a practice problem. Rank these five gases according to how ideal their behavior is. The solution is to put the gases with lowest pressure and highest temperature at the top. The type of gas doesn't matter for this problem. This argon sample has the lowest pressure and highest temperature of all the gases, so it behaves most ideally. Next up is the sample of helium, which is at the same temperature, but a higher pressure. After that, nitrogen, which is at a lower temperature, then oxygen, which is at a lower temperature still. 
Lastly, the least ideal gas will be the sample of fluorine because it is at the highest pressure and the lowest temperature.